things. Okay, so this is this painting that I did uh, God, yesterday or the day before. I don't remember, it's, it's gouache, water, uh, gouache, oil pastel, and uh, colored pencil. So I'm going to remove it from the water block, and all I do is I go here and I'm going to cut it out. Slice it off here. I this is a very sharp knife. I just uh, sharpen it, and the reason why is because I'm going to use it to to um, sharpen some pencils. I actually like it's I like sharpening pencils with a knife better because you can sort of make cool little edges on it. Okay, so. Let me center this a bit. Move over a bit. Actually, no, I'm gonna move this here. I'm gonna move my camera closer. There we go. There we go. There we go. I'm just gonna move it, turn it this way because I want that thing at the bottom. Okay. I'm gonna to have to rotate this camera too. Okay. So here we go. Now, what the hell am I going to do? Okay, I, I'm not sure. Maybe, you know what I'll do? Maybe I'll just do another foresty one like I did yesterday, last time. Yeah, let's just do some sort of force, but maybe, maybe I'll do something that's kind of like, um, uh, who's the artist I like? Uh, he did the kiss. Very famous artist. My brain is totally blank right now. And anyway, he's done some really cool landscapes and, and he gave me lots of ideas. So either I'm gonna start the horizon low or high. Let's do another higher horizon one, okay? So let's say the horizon's here. Maybe, you know what I'll do? I know. I'm going to do one like I did the one yesterday, but I'm going to make it even more pronounced. I'm going to make it even more so, like, yeah. So I'll just start with a, some kind of tree. It comes right up here. And then uh, what my point, my point was, maybe I'll make it so right in the middle of this is light vignette. I don't know. Who knows? Let's just do this. What if you have a branch come off here? Let's have a branch right there. <laughs> oh, it's kind of a thick tree. Oh. And just for fun, let's go in and switch up. If I can click on people's names, can I see something? No. Oh. Right. Oh, yes. Okay, so here's what I mean about usually I need a, a place to let me get a little bowl. Hold on. Just so I don't get like a shavings everywhere. So here's what I, I prefer: uh, cutting pencils with a, with a with a sharp knife over. Uh, Pencil sharpener sometimes, but you could fuck it up like I just did there, where the whole lead part crumbles. So maybe, and the only reason why is sometimes you get like cool edges, but you know what? Maybe, uh, maybe I'm totally wrong. Maybe I should get a pencil sharpener. <laughs> I don't know. 
Is this the same? Oh, fuck, this is the same color as before. Oh, is it? It's slightly different. Let's just do this. Oh, yeah, it's red, so it's slightly different. I like to mix it up. Yeah, I'm gonna get my pencil sharpener. Who am I kidding? I actually have quite a few colors. I actually have this set that I've had since probably 1983. That's how long I've had these pencils for. I've done tons of drawings from them. And I kind of slowly recycled some pencils into there. Uh, like, look how old this tape is. This tape is like this uh, ma like regular masking tape that's like 20 years old. Okay, what I'm looking for is like a, a darker purple, or maybe I'll zoom in some more. There we go. Looking for, actually, yeah, some more, yes. <sighs> Sorry, put my camera. Oops. Okay. So let's do, I don't know. Another okay, so I'm just sort of laying out a kind of oh, how about this one tree is kind of coming off to the side a bit, kind of bending. And there's another one of these trees. Is where's the pencil sharpener? Okay. Klimt. That's who I was thinking of. Gustav Klimt. I really like some of his landscapes. And there's one when I was doing that painting yesterday. There's one I was thinking about where it's very orangey, and he has cool patterns. And I was thinking about that one. And I might do the same kind of idea where he just had such awesome patterns going on. So like here, you know, there's going to be like maybe some birch bark kind of patterny things happening. I'm just going to fuck around for a bit. Let's do... Hey, someone's actually here. Nevermore Lane. How's it going? And uh, yeah, here I'll just show you. This is the painting I did yesterday or the day before. One sec. Ow! Son of a bitch. Okay, yeah, so this is like a. I'm thinking I might do something like this again. It looks better. It looks so much better up close. Like from a distance, it's all right. But what I want to do is like, I like the patterns and stuff happening in the bottom. And I might do something like that. I'm pretty good. This is my first time on D Live. I normally, uh, oh, thanks. Normally I do the streaming on, on YouTube, but kind of like sick of YouTube. Oh, not YouTube, uh, Facebook. But I'm kind of, Facebook's kind of creeping me out a little bit. And I literally only came here because I saw that PewDiePie switched over. I was watching, I don't know, I think it was Timcast or somebody talking about switching over. And I was like, well, you know what? It'd be great if there was another place to stream. So I thought, you know, maybe I'll be like one of the first... <sighs> non-gamers that are streaming on this thing but what the hell so i'm gonna go with the flow so i'm gonna make this forest now my plan oh i'd leave my facebook yeah 
Well, that's why you're here too. That's pretty cool. Right on. Well, I got like uh, I started streaming on Facebook my artwork about a year and a half ago, and I got like twelve thousand people there. So I kind of feel like, you know, maybe they feel like I'm abandoning them because <laughs> they, because I've been, I was, you know, streaming quite a lot on my artwork. But uh, yeah, I just want to do something a little different. Maybe this will be the new thing. Okay, so let's think about this. We're gonna have a horizon, and maybe there'll be like lots of little little trees and shit over here. Come here, you. So my eyes aren't very good. Your icon's so small, I can't I can't even see what you look like. Do you uh, are you into art and drawing and painting? I'm gonna do a little test. Dorky pumpkin. Hey dorky pumpkin. I'm gonna do a test message because I'm just gonna say hi. Hi. Hit send. Nothing fucking happens. Can like I'm, I'm going to put a budget text, blah, 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 hit enter. And I don't think my text is showing up. Oh, so we got, uh, so never more. Yes, you're an artist as well. Sweet. I don't know why my chat doesn't work. Been streaming on Twitch, but thinking of switching. Yeah, I've never tried Switch. I was just, I was just on Facebook because that's where most of my followers are. And I just started. Yep. Yeah. So literally, this is my very first time, and I don't know what the hell. I'm just tr figuring stuff out. Like, I don't know why my chat isn't, like, working. I, I literally had send a message and hit send, and nothing happened. Oh, I have some blockers on. Let me just disable these stupid Chrome blockers. Let me just... I, might, I wonder if I refresh, it'll kill the page. Yeah, I might have to... Uh, wait, let me do one more test. Test. T-E-S-T nothing okay all right so anyhow so i've got a basic idea here of this kind of forest right and what i'm going to do next i think i have these are called oil pastels and uh they look like chalk but if you were to touch them the very let's see where's the camera they're very soft so it's it's an oil oil pastel and maybe, what color is this? I'll just start like playing with some patterns. Oh, I know what I want to do. I'm going to do a wash of, of, of a color. And what I'm going to be using is something called gouache. Gouache is a kind of paint like watercolor, but it's opaque. So you can paint over lighter colors. Like with watercolor, when you paint, you can't paint lighter on dark, but with gouache you can. But it's water-based, so it's uh, it feels like painting with watercolor. So what I'll do is, let me start with this. So I'm going to use this color. What does it say there? Carmine. Interesting. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little dab. Bloop. Maybe here, there. And actually, maybe I'll do a couple dabs of color. G-O-U-A-C-H-E. G-O-U-A-C-H-E. Actually, I can show you. I can't type it. Where is it? G-O-U-A-C-H-E. All right, so then I'll get a, a watercolor brush. So I'll just choose, this guy's nice and fluffy. Nice and fluffy. So I got some water over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spread it around. And I'm using watercolor paper, which is pretty important to use. It comes in a block like this, and you just cut off each piece. Okay, so I'll tell you the reason why I like doing a undercoat is if you paint straight on white, you're just gonna get the white showing through. And sometimes it just, there's something, um, it, it doesn't have the effect that I that I like. So that's why I have to do an undercoat for sure when I'm working in like oils or I don't really use acrylics anymore I, I do oil painting and like I, I don't know if I can show you I got there are fuck tons all around me oh I know if I switch to my here check this out if I switch to this front cam yeah so I got 
some big paintings way over here. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there's some very large paintings stacked up there. And uh, what? there's a little painting of sky I did. There's another little one I just did. I don't know if you can see that. But I've got like hundreds of, probably a few hundred. Thanks. I haven't used oil paints in forever. Yeah. Okay, so here's what I learned. Let me switch back to the top. I use what are called water, shit balls, water based oils. <sighs> See this? This is a by Winsor Newton Artisan. They're water mixable oil colors. So what's nice about it is you don't have to have all those stinky chemicals like turpentine and and linseed oil and walnut oil. You know those toxic fumes. It's it's like you just mix it with water and you can wash it with water to uh, wash it off with water. So that's awesome. So I've been painting with water based oils for a couple years. And it's great because um, if you don't, you know, it's very, it's pretty toxic. All right. So all I'm doing is I'm, I'm just screwing around. Honestly, like I like to, I don't like to plan things too much. I sort of like just go with the flow and see what happens. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in these oil pastels and just, sort of see what happens. The last painting I showed you, I didn't do it under wash and I kind of regretted it because I spent a lot of time just trying to like fill in the, the, the sp spots. And I like to do a backwash with red because it creates like a warm vibe to the whole thing. Now, okay, so I haven't used gouache. That painting I did, oh no, I did a couple. I started using gouache just this week for the first time in like 10, 15 years. So it was kind of fun because I've done a lot of gouaches when I was younger. And uh, so I, I don't know how this is going to turn out. Like I haven't done, this will literally be the first time in 15 years I've done like a, a backwash on using gouache. So it's always an experiment. Okay, now for up here, question is the hell am I gonna do am I going to maybe I'll do a backwash of a light blue okay so I'm gonna choose a different brush let's choose oh, look at this crazy Chinese brush look at this thing so you it's used for traditional calligraphy but I'm not doing it was actually my mom's my mom did traditional calligraphy so I kind of like she did it years and years ago. We're talking like 30 years ago. And uh, she's actually a really good painter, but she hasn't painted in probably two decades. So I took some of her brushes and this was one of them. And this is literally the first time I've ever used this brush and I don't like it. <laughs> I'm gonna use it, it's not enough control. Don't like this brush either. Good thing I got like 50 brushes handy. Maybe maybe I'll do is I'll, I'll use a couple blues. Tap that blue in here. Tap that one. Okay. And here's where gouaches are great is that you can add white. And the white will actually mix like an acrylic. unlike watercolor. So it has the benefits of being very uh, fluid like watercolor in that it just takes a tiny drop of paint to get a lot of mileage and it dries like water, it behaves like watercolor, but it behaves like acrylic in that you can paint on top of other colors. So. So, like, if you've done watercolors, you know that you really have to plan out your light and dark areas. You have to know, 
you have to let the white paper show through to define your light areas because as soon as you put like dark stuff on there it's gone forever so this is how it gives you more control and that's why i like it okay so what about let's even try oh, this is a nice color this is a turquoise blue let's see how this one if i just tap it here Oop, I put a lot there. I might have to bring in some white to balance it out. That's very strong. Wow. I like how it just sort of starts bleeding through. That's cool. <laughs> And I want that, what was that really pale of water? This one here. Okay. Hey, did you go? Are you gone? Nevermore Lane, are you out of here? That's all right. my stats on my on my software to make sure it's it's rendering okay um, where does it say stats view stats okay good not many drop frames 0.3% that's all right well, maybe I'll show you my desktop so you can see what I see I don't know if anyone cares. Oh, I got a lemon. Woo, woo, woo. I don't know what the hell lemon does for me, but thank you for the lemon, dorky pumpkin. <laughs> Maybe that's an insult. Maybe just to let you like, man, you suck so bad. I'm going to fucking give you a lemon because you suck. That's probably what it is. <laughs> well, the good thing is, I can't be offended. You could tell me I suck. You could tell me I'm a big fat asshole. I don't, I really don't care. I'm, I laugh that shit off. Okay. So I've got this thing going on now. All right. So we have some sort of composition. Trying to, where's my coffee? I'm also just letting it dry for a bit. Sometimes you have to give it a minute. Like if you look, I don't know if you can see this, but let me show you. If you look, let me try to get the light on it. Yeah, there you go. So you can see how it's still wet right there. See the shine right there? So I'm just sort of stalling for a second just to let it dry it a bit i don't know either sorry if you felt that way i thought it was some sort of a currency here oh dude i don't i don't take offense man it's all good thank you yeah i was just messing around i just i just i like to have fun i don't take things too seriously okay i'm trying to find something on my desktop well anyhow okay all right so Let's go in and let's try some of these oil pastels. Now, can you see what I see? Okay, I'm gonna go. Okay. Oh, I have to move this thing over so I can see your text. Here we go. Oops. Okay, so. I'm going to try this. This is a kind of a really nice warm yellow. Look at that. I don't think it doesn't say the color, does it? Just says past. Okay. So there is a painting by Klimt, Gustav Klimt of a landscape, and it's just beautiful. And it's got like one of the trees is like dark and one's like brown and there's like gray and stuff. And what I just love about it are the patterns. So I'm going to try to like, 
steal that idea a little bit and then make my own version. That's kind of what I did yesterday. I was thinking about this painting and what he was so masterful at is just these cool little, yeah, I guess they're little paintings of color. Now his painting was probably big, so it would be much, I wouldn't say easier, but you could probably accomplish those patterns a lot easier with oil paint, like big, big splotches of oil paint. Okay, it says, I draw it too, but I only use pencils, colored pencils, and Sharpies. Yeah, right on. Yeah, I just use whatever, man. I, I have, I draw with everything. Um, pencils, just sort of whatever's handy. It's just, it's, I like experimenting. Okay. Let's try some orange. Yeah. Okay. The painting that I did yesterday, or not day yesterday, the day before or whatever, I felt was too soft. It was too too gentle. So I'm coming in a little bit harder this time. Harder edges, more um, contrast. This is gold. Huh. I don't want gold. That's kind of kind of funny. Oh, it's kind of very yellowy, isn't it? Stupid water thing is. I don't want this rattling. in the sky what do I put to start playing with things and stuff it's a very it's a green let's draw some lines here like let's do Yeah, I think in this one I'm going to make the forest in the background heavier and darker. I don't know. I don't know what these things are. These are just well, maybe I'll do another tree that comes up here. What is that? Although I don't like that green. Let's try purple. Hello, what are you painting with? Hey, Mazika 110. I'm using gouache, which is like a watercolor, but it's opaque. I'm using colored pencils, and I'm using um, these are called oil pastels. Let me see that. And I'm just sort of mixing up as I go. I'm just sort of just playing. What color is this? Okay. So these ones are meant to be sort of kind of like birch trees. Birch trees, I don't know if you notice, they have this inverted kind of cup shape that happens. And they have like knots in them. But every once in a while they have these kind of like inverted that's where I, I I live in Ontario, Canada, and uh, we've got these really beautiful forests up north. And uh, I grew up going up there all the time, and birch trees are really common. So that's sort of like I'm I'm making up my own birch trees. I'm not really really doing birch trees. I'm just sort of screwing around, making up my own forest. Let's just call it. I'm doing a combination of Gustav Klimt um, go look go Google Gustav Klimt landscapes and there's maybe Gustav Klimt landscapes like orange forest or something 
so this is a painting that that I'm thinking of where it's it's all orange and yellows and I remember there's one of the trees on the right is dark but it has this amazing vibe of like all these cool patterns and and it is it's beautiful like it's masterful and then so I'm 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 thinking about that and I'm also thinking about the place where I grew up like in, in like Ontario and I'm also sort of just maybe doing a little bit of Van Gogh-y kind of stuff. So these heavy outlines kind of make me think of Van Gogh. And I'm just screwing around in general. Like, uh, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. And blabbing. So, oh, we got some more people. I was just going to say it. About the birches, yeah. Oh, right on. Cool. Yeah, I'm actually in Toronto. But when I grew up, we would go up north to Lake of Bays, Algonquin Park, like every weekend. That's where I spent my summers, and I loved it up there. And unfortunately, we don't have that cottage anymore. It was where my, my grandparents basically lived up there. So we'd go and visit them at the cottage, and fuck, I loved it. So a lot of my – I do a lot of – recently I've done a lot of artwork. That's my memories of uh, like Algonquin Park, and uh, I also love Tom Thompson. He's one of my favorite artists. So I'm trying to do, I, I, you know, I'm just doing a combination of a little bit of Tom Thompson, a little bit of uh, Van Gogh, a little bit of Klimt, and my own stuff. Okay, now what else should I do? Let's try this. Let's try this. See what happens now uh, when I put some white oil pastel on top of gouache. Oh, it actually works well. This is interesting. So this is quite white, but when I do it on top of the gouache, it turns it to a gray, so it's actually transforming a little bit. So that's kind of, that's still kind of cool. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm hoping to accomplish. I want to make these kind of like birches, and I want to make it a forest that becomes that's heavier with a lot more little details here. And I want to try to steal some of those uh, clipped, um, the fuck, the fully the, the ground. It's like a, it's like a forest of of leaves, sort of. So that's what I want to get to. Oops. Beaches? Klimt apparently is beaches. Is that a type of tree, maybe? Is that what he did? It was called beaches? Hmm. I think he has some of the most underrated uh, landscape paintings. He's known for his, like, figures, you know, like <clears throat> the famous one of the kiss. Or, I mean, I love those, some, some of his other paintings, the figurative paintings, the very decorative design paintings. But... Some of his landscapes are just amazing. I love them. I love the composition. A lot of his compositions, like, I've done a whole bunch of paintings that kind of, I kind of took some of his ideas where it'll be just a little bit of light down here, and then the rest will be just, like, colors. Oh, beaches have beech nuts. Ah, uh, okay. Makes sense. So I did a whole series of paintings called The Glow Beyond, which was um, influenced by some of his landscapes. It's on my website. I could show you if you guys care, but um, whatever. So, so I'm just trying to think of it's going to be a bunch of like lots of layers, and maybe I'll start painting with gouache too. Hello, <laughs> myself sixty nine. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> His name is Myself69. <laughs> Thanks for the 11, dude. Yeah, I would like to see finished products. Sure, okay. Um, let me um, switch to the 
my desktop. Okay, there's my desktop. So my website is druckman.com. So that's my last name. So D R U C K M A N dot com. Did I type it in? Yeah. The fuck? Oh. I pressed. Oh, I think I had something. Okay. Druckman.com. Yeah. Okay. So, and go to gallery collections. And then I think the one I was just talking about is called the glow beyond. So this is a, a collection of some, these are all collections on, on, on there. So I'm just going to go to the collections and these are all, I don't know how many there are. Okay. This is a big painting. This one is fucking huge. This is like 70, what? Four by seven feet or four by six feet. I think. I'll just show that one first just because so many goddamn dots. So, yeah, that's like a close-up of it. And there's, you can actually watch. So there I'm painting it. I did this a while ago. So I've, I've done time-lapse videos and all kinds of shit. But, yeah, so these were all inspired by Gustav Klimt. I even I wrote it up here. I said, this series of paintings explores visual idea of a glowing light and a blah, 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 blah. The compositions and to a lesser degree the patterns are inspired by some of Gustav Klimt's landscapes such as fruit trees, pear tree, and the park. And so they all they all have this similar composition. I'll just go to one like this. And uh, yeah, I was just sort of like smitten by Gustav Klimt's stuff. So I would do a, just a big series of patterns and then a little bit of like light showing through down here. So there you go. Okay. I have my Facebook page up to see because I, I put here like uh, trying out live streaming on DLive. Because most people watch me on Facebook. Let's see if somebody said something like, what the hell are you doing? Why are you? Where, where the fuck are you doing? Okay. Um, oh, Cindy. Cindy is someone who follows me a lot. She's this really nice woman who's like, um, she thinks she's fighting some kind of cancer stuff. So we, we talk about it and like, it's kind of nice because she's got like a dog like my, we both both have, um, we talk about our dogs a lot while I'm streaming. Okay, let me just go back to the, uh, how do I get back to it? Top. Here we go. Okay. Took long enough to get here. I don't know what that means. Myself. Okay, so let me go back to what I was doing. Okay. What do I want to do? Do I want to paint? Or do I want to use... Okay, yeah, maybe I'll switch to painting now. Okay, to switch to painting, I'm going to just use this lid of this plastic container as my painting palette. And what I want to do is I want to work on patterns up here. I want to make it look like there's lots of little trees all, all up here. And I think painting might work well. So what I have over here is I recently got these brushes. These are awesome little t fine, cute little brushes. Like some of them, here, check this out. Look how, look how cute these little guys are. So I'm going to go and I'm going to use... Maybe, and some of them are flat. So look at this. So this one is flat and thin. And then I got a couple of those. And then some are just straight up pointy. Now here's, here's I was getting lazy when I was cleaning my brushes. Yeah, they look dandy. Don't do this. Don't be a lazy fuck like me. I just threw them in the water and then I left, let them sitting down so the tip starts bending. So if, if you ever like need to wash your brushes, like I got, like if I'm washing big brushes, like bigger brushes, like these guys, I can throw them in because the, the bristles are hard. But with watercolor or gouache brushes, they're very soft and they they get just, like they get bent really easily. So yeah, like look at this one. I just I left it in there for about an hour, and it already is bent. So just don't be an idiot like me and get lazy. Okay, so I'm gonna try this brush, 
And <sighs> what should I do? Okay, I think, yeah, I'm, I feel like all along here and here. What colors? Hmm. I'm going to use white to create negative space, like lighter colors. So if I put like a light color here around the dark blue, it created negative space and the blue becomes the like branches of behind it. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense, but I'll, I'll show you in a little bit. But let's try this. Let's use this yellow, Naples yellow. All right. So I'm just going to stick it on here. Now gouache like acrylic. Unlike watercolor, when it dries, you can't really use it again. If this was watercolor, I could just put water on it and then it, it gets reabsorbed. With gouache, it's now hardened and I can't really access it anymore. So that's a little bit of a difference. So there's kind of pros and cons, but I just like wash because it's just, like I said earlier, it's so much more flexible. There's so many th more things you can do with it. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to start making little patterns of color. Maybe I'll zoom in so you can see what the fuck I'm doing. Excuse my French. Okay, I go like this. Let's see how close I can go. This is pretty neat. Zoom one more time. Okay. And then go over here. Okay. I'm gonna go, and all I'm doing is I'm gonna make these little tiny little brush strokes and this, I'm hoping, is going to form like a pattern that's a combination of either leaves or sky. And, I mean, for me, the most fun thing about painting is like, there are no rules. No one can say you're, you're doing it right or wrong. And some one, one area in life, probably, that... Uh, if you choose to do it, you can, I don't know, have lots of freedom and, and it's, it's very enjoyable. That's, that's the way I see it. Okay, so I'm going to try a couple of colors. Let's see this. This might be a bit of a mistake. I know, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this bright yellow. It's too intense for what I want, but I'm going to mix it with white. So this is where gouache is superior to watercolor. You can actually mix things and have some control. Oh, shit. I was, I was, here you go. What I just did is I took a little bit of this yellow, which was too intense. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust the color so it's more like real life. It's The default setting of this camera is kind of low. So I'm just going to jack it up from 52 to 55%. That looks... Yeah, so I just increased the saturations of the camera so it's a bit more like real life. Okay, so you can see how... This is just too lemony, and I plugged the water uh, white on it. So I'm just going to mix these together. Actually, even in real life, it's it's definitely more. I'm looking at my screen. I look so I look at my screen. Thought you like? No, I do like intense, but I, I want I I want uh, subtleties. Like like there's intensity and subtleties, and fuck it, you know. I'm just doing. I, I, I'm blabbing. Who knows what the hell I'm saying? What I was talking about was intensity compared to the, the painting I did yesterday, which is just sitting over there. I'm not, I won't pick it up. But um, yes, so I did say that, but I was kind of talking about in relation to my previous one. Okay, so you guys don't know me, right? So I'll just tell you something personal. The reason why I talk a lot as I, call, as I have a very, very severe tinnitus, which is ringing in the ear. And uh, it's uh, it's very, it can get really fucking scary because it's so loud sometimes like a train going by, but it never leaves me. I can't escape it because I have a brain tumor right on my auditory nerve, so I can't, they can't operate, they can't take it out. So over the past couple of years, what I've found out is that I can calm down the ringing when I'm painting and talking at the same time. <laughs> so I, I sometimes I'm just fucking just babbling about a bunch of nonsense and I'm just doing it because it helps calm down this ringing in my head. 
<laughs> and sometimes, like, you know, I'll totally forget that I'm live and I'm just talking a whole bunch of weird, like, nonsense. <laughs> so, so, you know, hopefully, <laughs> if I start talking about something ridiculous, you'd be like, okay, he's probably just trying to, just rambling on. Okay. All right. I think maybe I'll zoom out because I'm too close to this thing. Let me zoom out. Ramble That's a little Led Zeppelin for you folks. Typically the way I like to paint is I like to just start with some sort of crazy uh uh some people oh my god i um i have i bought like i had my entire house every room had a white noise machine going um every night for the past couple of years i have a fan going even though i don't even need the wind i have to have that white noise yeah but um uh yeah i've tried everything and unfortunately the fucking little bastard tumors right on my auditory nerve so they can't cut it out if they cut it out they said it might, if anything, there's a possibility it could paralyze half your face because the nerve is related to, I think it's the trigeminal nerve or something. And it may not even, um, oh yeah, I'm also going deaf because of this. What's happening is my ear works fine, but the fucker tumor is right on the auditory nerve. So it stops the, the, the auditory information going to my brain. And so that's why I can't hear out of this ear mostly. But then my brain interprets the lack of signal because this only happened a couple of years ago. My brain creates this frequency to compensate for the lack of sound. And yes, so I it's it's so a lot of people have tinnitus. They usually get it from when they were young. They were listening to loud music and it caused damage to the eardrum. That's a, a common thing, but not me. Mine is a a unique case where there's a tumor that's just fucking right right blocking the signal and uh oh so i i teach a little bit just part-time and yesterday in class i started hearing other frequencies it was getting weird it's they started like i hear this one sound constantly and it started changing and it got so loud, I couldn't even hear what my students were talking, were saying. And, it's, and it, it causes panic attacks, too, because it's just like a crazy torture. It's like there's a sound that you can never escape. It's kind of like someone yelling in your ear, but it's wherever you go. <laughs> so that's why I need to just keep talking sometimes. And it's kind of nice because, you know, it's, it's kind of like mind over matter to some degree. You forget about it. You forget about it. Okay, so we still got a long way to go. Right. I actually sleep okay. I sleep okay because, uh, I don't know. This, there was this, I really like a, this color. Maybe it's not this specific one, but I like blue greens. That one's more like a, a light blue. Oh, yeah. Let's try this peacock blue. That's interesting. I think that's the color. Yeah, that's kind of nice. They're very similar. Jeez, man, you would almost just let them cut out and accept not hearing. No, no, no. So here's the problem. If they cut it out, I will go deaf 100% of the year, and I could get my face paralyzed, and the frequency may not even go away. In fact, it might even get worse. And it may, if anything, they, the, this is the top specialist in Canada who knows the specific type of tumor said, you know, there's a chance it'll just change frequencies. So, and they say that there's 50-50 chance that um, it won't even help you. And you could risk, yeah, I, I'm not afraid of going deaf. I'm mostly deaf on that ear anyhow. That, that doesn't bug me at all. But the sound, really, it's hard, man. It's changed my life. I can't like... I can't really go out and talk to people. I take my dog to the dog park and people are talking at looking at like talking to me and 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 I'm just fighting to fucking keep it together cuz there's giant screaming sound. And they you know, we're just talking about our dogs and stuff and I'm like <laughs> fuck. <laughs> yeah, so there we go. That's just life. Life. 
Okay. So I can tell you, I still want to, I'm, I'm into this painting. It's going to be a while. Let me zoom out. Yeah. The only reason I zoomed in is maybe because the brush strokes are so small. Maybe we're seeing. Okay, so let's just start doing stuff. Let's see if I could. Oops. Maybe pencil would be better for doing that. What I really need to do is I need to go up north and take photographs so that I can remember what the trees are like. Because a lot of times I'm just sort of making it up and I'm not really sure if I'm doing it right. I mean, that's I guess that's kind of what's good about art is that you can, you can just do what you want and it doesn't matter. But it's still, sometimes I'm like going, you know, do there are there branches that go out? Are there, you know, am I even doing this? I don't know. Oh, I missed a bunch of people said some stuff. There was someone named Whoa, mind blowing details. Thanks, man. That was I love the person's myself 69. The only question I have is why don't you say 69 myself? Because that seems like it would be, uh, that would make more sense, wouldn't it? There are no stickers on here? What, what do you mean? I don't know what that means. I, I'm totally new to D Live. This is my first time streaming, first time actually being here. So maybe is a sticker like something related to D Live? There are no stickers on here. Someone's got to explain it to me because I don't know. What color is this? Okay, so this is like a bit of a purple. That's kind of a little, oops. Let's just do this. It shows the icon for smiles and you click it and nothing. I don't know. I, you know what? I think maybe I'm, I'm thinking it might be uh, a blocker on on the browser because I can't actually type a message that is out I'm gonna click the, the, the message box I'm gonna say uh, hi okay whatever I'm hit enter and nothing comes through and I've got a feeling it might be like a Chrome extension that's blocking it like a pop-up blocker so maybe that's what you have too or the website's glitchy those are my, my two thoughts on that So what I'm gonna what I'm doing here is I'm gonna just kind of like see if I can make the impression of like tr like just like all kinds of trees in the background and vary it up and add layers and maybe some. I feel like doing, I don't know, I feel like doing some white. Let's just try pure white. This is what it says. Click on the sticker or meme to add to favorites and is blank. I don't know, maybe there's something I'm supposed to set up. Like, I don't know. Uh, I was actually even surprised that I got to stream. I mean, I literally was just like, turned on my OBS software, added the stream information. Like it didn't even give me a prompt. It just started streaming. Like it didn't even like, I, like I've, I, I do live streaming on, on Facebook and at least they tell you there's like a button where you click it says, okay, go live now. But uh, with this one, I didn't really explore too much settings. So maybe that's something that I need to do. I don't know. So here's an example. What I mean of, of negative space. What I do is, is I'll paint white. Where's where? Maybe we're gonna maybe over here. If I paint 
like two strips of white, the space between the white becomes the the shape. And it's a it's a, it's a good technique to do. It kind of add I don't know why, it just it gives it a nice flavor sometimes. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm just trying to build up like textures. I'm just trying to build up, yeah, textures. That's literally it. And uh, I'll tell you, like one of my, for that person who's in, but I see no, but I have no stickers. Sorry, man. I don't know. I don't even know what a fucking sticker is. This sticker is like a little emoticon or something. So this is for anyone who lives in Toronto. You should go to the Art Gallery of Ontario and go to the Group of Seven exhibit. And some of the best paintings you'll see are in these drawers. You actually, it's like these cabinets that you probably wouldn't even notice. But you pull these drawers out and each one has like a paintings on panel. And there's some of the most beautiful little paintings. And I got a lot of my ideas over the years because I used to go there when I was young. I'm an old fucker. And, uh, and I used to go, go to the AGO all the time. In fact, they did it kind of two summer art schools there when I was like 15 or 16. So I love the Group of Seven room. And I just, well, I discovered, I, I found those drawers were just, you just open them up and they're like little magic little boxes full of these magic little paintings. And some of them are better than the big ones that you see. You saw some in Waterloo. Hmm. I wonder if it's Waterloo. wonder what gallery that you're talking about. Waterloo. I think my nieces go there. I think, uh, no, they go to Guelph. I don't know. It was one of those schools. There's all okay. So if you like Group of Seven stuff, check out the Mc, is it the McMichael Art Gallery? Man, it is beautiful. It's also like if you ever want to go on a really nice date, take them to the McMichael Art Gallery. It's probably about an hour drive from Toronto, and it's just gorgeous. It's like it's the, it's like surrounded by this beautiful forest, and there's this famous I wouldn't say famous, but there's a very well known restaurant that. You, they, that's just around the corner and it's just like uh it's just just like you're surrounded by natural beauty let's put it this way so mcmichael art gallery and they have some amazing a group of seven paintings there so that's that's a tip it was a it was on the university camp oh i see so the university had some um had some in their like collection or whatever that's cool. Waterloo. So what I'm doing now is I'm just I'm just going around and I'm looking for spots. Oh shit. Let me I, I think I should have sorry. I was whole time I was working all around here and I didn't realize the camera wasn't showing it. But I was working all along here in the sky. I, to be honest, I don't really remember much about like going to Waterloo. Like I, I probably did. Um, like I'm sure I had friends who went there. I just don't recall. Where did my, I had one buddy? I think it was Guelph. Yeah, because he there was a sports bar called the Griffins, and one of my my buddy, well, he became my friend too was on the football team and I think they're called the football Griffins and the sports bar was the Griffs and he was like the manager of the of that club so I think that's I'm thinking about Guelph I just can't remember going to Waterloo are you there now is that uh, you're at university myself 69 <laughs> Maybe that's better. Wow, this is still 
like so it's still very early in the in the painting process it's still i still have a long way to go for what i want to do let's try this color too pastel yeah it's too pastel i have so many colors i bought it's crazy i just i couldn't decide oh look at this this is a nice cream yellow let's try this oh it's almost like you want to eat it that is a nice color so what i'm thinking about is maybe as you come down here the shapes are going to be more they're larger and they might come down at angles like this so i'm going to do some brush strokes like this and then as they get up higher i'm going to make them turn like horizontal strokes like this and then it gets to the top they're going to be like little dots so it's going to create an impression of depth and it's it's just going to give your eyes something to like as it'll evolve as it'll change as you as you look up so that's what that's what i'm doing right now i'm literally just sort of plop 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 and then here i'll start coming in with more of these horizontal things Ooh, I left for a bit and it looks so much better. Hey, thanks. Yeah, well, it's going to get it. Trust me. The it is it, it, I honestly find that when I do a painting, it's only until like the I'll work on a painting, let's just say for an hour, an hour and a half. It's the last two minutes where it's like I just something comes together. Like I just know it. So I mean, my intention is to uh, have a lot more colors and then a lot more details up here and a lot of these little spotty little light coming through i don't know if can you see that it's probably so small on the screen i have to hold my breath sometimes because i'm sometimes your own heartbeat like uh pushes the brush it's like a sniper you got to hold your breath <laughs> So what are you studying, um, 69er? <laughs> At Waterloo, computer science. That's sort of the... the thing to do. Waterloo. Is it is computer science and engineering? Is that what it's... I can't remember what Waterloo is known for. I'm also like right now I'm putting a lighter color, but I'm also going to put uh, darker colors down too. Well, because Waterloo, that's what it's known for computer science and engineering, right? Okay, let's try browns now. Where can we bring browns? I'm kind of feeling browns up here, like just sort of filling in the some of these spots. We'll try a light brown, and then I'll uh, move in. Yeah, maybe I'll like do some weird strokes here. Just try to bring some of that same stuff over here. Maybe I'll bring some of those darker colors here. Maybe I bring some patterns, like as if there's a sticks going around. How long have you been painting? Well, I just turned 49. And so you could say I've been painting my whole life. I started quite young. I got good, I think, around 14 or 15. But I was always into painting. So 
I was always into art. I started building a website and I, so far I've got about 850 paintings and drawings up on it. I still have quite a few more. Yep, 49, just turned 49. I know, I look young. Especially when I'm not so fat too. I actually look, I get away of like 35 when I'm not, in fact, when I don't have a beard and I lose like about 30 pounds, I, I look like 15 years younger. I don't know if that's good or bad. But uh, damn, I only recently started, and I uh, don't say that honestly. You know, I know what you, I know like it's it's good to be self-deprecating, but honestly, just fuck it. That's that's my attitude. Is is like don't give a shit what anyone thinks, and honestly, just have fun with it. And and because there is no right or wrong way to do it, right? Like who says? Here's the thing. I think there's a big misconception with making something realistic is good that's not necessarily like that's just sort of a technical skill that you can develop and and there's all kinds of tricks you can do so i wouldn't say s sucking well that i've always i always felt like i'm not trying to impress anybody i'm doing it because i'd like to do it and it makes me feel good and whatever so therefore how can you suck at something that just makes you feel good right i think if you take that sort of attitude it's 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 healthier and makes you less inhibited and gives you more freedom to try stuff, right? Because uh, when you're your own critic, like you're going to be your own critic through so many things in life. And uh, at least for me, this is one area in my life where I can just let myself go and not, not worry. So I guess, you know, that's just the way I look at it. There is no sucking if you don't care, if you're just doing it because it feels good. Well, wow, that's kind of cool to when you're younger, yeah. Huh? Twenty years younger. Well, I know it's also because wait, true. I guess it's just being in art college. It makes it feel like, oh, you're in art college right now, M Mizika. I went to art school for a year, then I dropped out. Oh, whoa, Schmurf. You know what? Sometimes the I love fucking people's names, the stuff they come up with. So so far, no one's beaten myself 69. But uh, so what? Uh, yeah, art college. So yeah, it is like a it, it is a weird competition. I, I understand that. In fact, so I use Instagram a tiny bit. And uh I'm only doing it because I'm just, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't like to see people in real life. I like prefer to keep it online, and uh, you know, Instagram is one place to be. But there are, I find sometimes it's depressing for me to go on Instagram because there are so many talented people out there, and you're like, oh man, that stuff is so good. And also too, there's almost like there is a weird competition to, to get noticed. And and sometimes what happens is people are doing art that is just about getting noticed and less about i think what the art is about is about seeking truth you know and that's why they'll put they'll put fucking selfies of themselves next to their pictures and it's usually like hot women hot girls or women whatever showing their ass and you know and, and it's like you know and if they're cute they'll get more likes and i think that's just that just pisses me off it's just so annoying i dropped out of art school because i was uh uh okay Please take in mind, please take with a grain of salt how I explain this. I was really good when I was young. I was really advanced. Okay, everyone, I, I knew this and I was told this. And in my first year of art school, they said I should have been doing my master's. And I totally agreed because they were teaching us stuff that I learned when I was 14 or 15. And, uh, and so I wasn't going to waste three years of my life because and also they, they weren't allowed to put me in the master's program. I, they said I had to go through the four-year degree before I could do a master's, and it was just a f waste of my time. So I, I left. 
and I, I went and did something else that I really loved. I went to, I went and I went to, also too. I was at Mount Allison Art School, which is in Sackville, New Brunswick, and it was so goddamn boring. <laughs> so I ended up going to McGill, which means Montreal. When Montreal's awesome, <laughs> and also I had a very serious girlfriend at the time, and she was at U of T, and it was so hard, you know, to be in a long-term relationship like that when you're like 20 years old, and. Uh, you know, at least when I was in Montreal, I could, you know, I could see her out in five hours. I'd just hop on the train and I'd see her at least every other weekend. But art school for me was a joke. Like, like in fact, I did so many things. I could, I could show you my website where they would give me assignments and I would like, like I remember I had to do a drawing of a pomegranate and I, and you're supposed to write artistic notes about it. And my, my mom was like, oh, look how delicious this is. It's so juicy. It was just, it was just so, just, I don't know. It was silly. It was silly. There are a few things I did learn in art school. I learned printmaking, and I can show you some prints that I did, which were, which were kind of fun. I learned about uh, lino relief and intaglio printing. And the coolest thing I did, and I can honestly say it really did suck, is I did a bronze – I learned how to do, do a tiny bit of metal work. And I did a bronze cast statue of this head, and it's not very good. But it was so cool to be in a forge or foundry, whatever it's called, and to be able to um, – poor bronze you know it was just it was just such a cool experience i'd never never you know so i did learn some things from there but yeah it was a waste of my time it was just obnoxious like learning this these color theory and you had to like basically cut out pieces of paper and put them next to each other to show that you know what a complementary color is and i'm like oh jesus christ you're killing me you're killing me. I was ready to do experimental stuff. I was ready to to explore ideas and things, and, and I realized I didn't need art school for that. I didn't need any of that. They gave me full scholarship to return. And I said, no. Nope. See ya. Mount Allison, New Brunswick. It's never one reason why you do things, right? It's always a bunch of reasons. So what are you at OCAD? My, wait, who is it? Wait, Mizika, Mizika 110. Are you at OCAD? Because I do have some strange, there's some strange shit going on over there that I wonder about. Okay, I'm just starting to build up. Okay, I wanted to do white, right? So let's go back to the white. Let's go back to, oh, I know. Do I want to? No. Do I? <laughs> it looks like snow, some of this. How about, let's try a pencil. Let's try a dark pencil. What color is this? Let's try this. I, I do think there's something wrong with this website because you guys are here, but it, it's it, it always says, like, watching now is zero, zero followers, even though there's a bunch of people here. So I think there's – maybe this, the website is kind of glitchy. Oh, sorry. I think it looks like – Oh yeah, cool. I uh, I teach at Seneca College sometimes. I think I, I was an advisor at uh, for Sheridan when they first started their animation program. Shows two watching here. You know, not not on my screen. It doesn't show anything. So it's probably just glitchy. Maybe. Maybe it's a browser issue. Okay, so let's do. Yeah, can I do this nice and thin? A 
What color is that? Oh, it's green. I thought it was going to be brown. Hey, DP holder. Hmm. I come from above. Oh, here's something I'd like to know. One of the reasons why I'm kind of tired of streaming on Facebook is I like to listen to music, right? And I keep on getting, they keep on doing the copyright thing where it kills the audio. So I don't know if you guys know if you're allowed to listen to music on DLive and they don't um, kill your audio. Hey, what's up? Okay, so I didn't want green necessarily. I was thinking more like dark blue or even black. So let's just switch to this pencil. Where's my... One thing I've been thinking about doing is, is painting in VR. Oh, fuck balls. What happened here? I've been thinking about getting the... Well, I'm waiting to see what happens with the Oculus Intact, which is apparently the new Oculus Rift versions, like their version 2. And I'm thinking about getting one and then painting in Quill. Uh, there's a guy named Goro Fujita, and... You should check if you're into like you know different kind of digital art. You should check this guy out. He does these three D digital paintings in like two or three hours, and then he then he renders them out in like Octane or something or like a game engine like Unity or Octane, uh, and there's, does post processing effects. And the the quality is just unbelievable. How fast he can do it too is totally cool. So I've been thinking about my guy. My idea was. Do paintings like this, but in in VR and 3D, so you can like go into the forest, and then later have a, a snapshot printed out on a big canvas, and then paint it. That was sort of that was from what it is. Oh yeah, yeah. D Live is kind of a, a weird name, but eh, let's let's see if this goes anywhere. Did you guys come because of PewDiePie? <laughs> I don't watch PewDiePie, but I, I watch this guy called uh, Tim 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 Pool, who has a uh, he does sort of political commentaries, and he was talking about how PewDiePie start moved over here, and I was thinking, you know what, PewDiePie has like ninety eight million followers, and so that has the ability to really shift people away from YouTube and Facebook, which is, to be honest, I'd love to get off of YouTube and Facebook. Yeah, so P because of PewDiePie, yeah. Uh, that's kind of crazy. Think about it. this one guy is able to, like, potentially disrupt this, you know, YouTube, which is kind of cool because, you know, this that's, that's, that's pretty awesome. And uh, the reason why I actually went and... I started um, on Minds.com, and the only reason why I started going there is because of Tim Pool. I don't know if you guys know him. Started using that as his hub because, uh, hi, fellow nine-year-olds. <laughs> well, I don't. I honestly, I've never watched one PewDiePie episode. You know, I'm fucking. I'm an old fart. I used. I think my brain would would fall out of my head. I think if I if I tried to. <laughs> All I know is I got a twelve year old, and and he, you know, I'm he's not supposed to watch PewDiePie, but he, I sometimes catching him watching it. So I I've got some ideas. I've more like watched some things about about it. People who've talked about it, and it seems pretty harmless to me. I love how people get so freaked out over stuff they don't even understand. People get all spazzy. People here were nice so far. Pewds makes me pewds <laughs> makes me smile. Yeah, well, you know, whatever works. 
Who am I to judge? Oops. Okay, that's still the green. I really wanted like a black color. What's this? It's like a brown. Let's try this. <clears throat> Try this. Yeah, this community is more supportive of each other, and everyone has more of a fair chance of being discovered. This work is beautiful. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Or, ma'am, man, anybody, whatever your gender is, I don't care. But thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, I was actually going to go switch over to Twitch, but I just, I don't know. I just didn't feel Twitch was right. It was just too seemed to be just saturated with gaming, and then I just thought I'd just try this. And I don't know. Okay, so how do I? Let's go like this and let's add some more kind of little weird little detail things. Like, look at this. Is this even a tree? What the fuck is this thing? Let's add. Let's add a couple more of these little. Weird little things. Okay. Thanks. And no pressure because most people are beginners, true. Yeah. Have you guys uh, looked at minds.com? Wonder if anybody else has. Actually, you know what's kind of annoying is, 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 uh, I, you know, I, th I, I've been on Reddit reading it for years and years and years, and I just started just posting some of my artwork just for the fuck of it. But apparently, it's been bought out by a, like a Chinese company and, uh, like a something related to the government. And it's just, it's something's creeping me out about it. And I like the idea, the blockchain idea. I like the idea that, you know, it's potentially hard to censor at least. But, uh, yeah, so I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what can come out of all this stuff. <laughs> what the hell is Twitch other than involuntary movement? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, what about now if I started just going in here and adding little shapes to make it feel like there's like like a forest of branches and stuff and like what if I started just drawing patterns and things coming across I really want to make these trees pronounced like that so I think there was I can't remember who was here at the beginning where I said oh wait, twitch is too big complex there's always a price tag well, the thing about Twitch, I just found was like the interface was just too fucking annoying. It was just too much shit going on, and and I just you know, it felt like okay, I got to learn an interface. That's that's why I felt, and uh, also too, I'm not, a, I have enough. You guys don't know this, but I, I but I've been in the video game industry for for 25 years, so I I don't need to watch people play video games. I've fucking had enough. I have a, my life is saturated with video games, so that's why I was never into Twitch just to watch some other people play shit. Most of my friends are in the video game industry, and I can tell you that we really, because <laughs> you spend all day making video games, you just it's like work after a while. It's rare that we sit down with a game and just enjoy it. Like I really enjoyed Last of Us. <coughs> But, you know, I've got hundreds of video games and I'm always kind of, need, you know, needing to watch the latest stuff. And I've got a kid who plays a lot and, <coughs> and very few things like interest me now or impress me at all. So that's why I was never in Twitch because I was never there for watching video games. Yeah, The Last of Us was, was such a well-done game. It was just so, oh, man, that 
the beginning, it just grabbed you and, and you felt like the characters were just the story. You know what the funny part is? The game designer, I'm pretty sure his last name is my last name, but with an extra N, Druckmann. And I've done lots of game design too, but people are like, what? You you just, you just, you know, you wrote The Last of Us? Like, no, 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 that was another dude. That was another dude. <laughs> Because I have a pretty uncommon last name. <laughs> That's kind of neat. That you did acting classes based on The Last of Us. I actually, okay, so because I've been in the industry for so long, I've played thousands of video games, right? For sure, right? I've only completed, and I'm, you know, of console games, like uh, campaign games, let's just say, I've only completed maybe like five or six completely all the way through. And Last of Us was one of the few games I've played all the way through twice. Another game that was blew me away was, uh, oh yeah, Joel's like the main character. If you ever play Resident Evil 5 on the GameCube, I think that was the one. It was another one of those games that was just wow because it, it had such a beautiful pace of gameplay and also uh, what was awesome about it was the the gameplay evolved just enough to be interesting. And I'm not a big fan of boss battles. It had a fair share of boss battles, but they were never so overwhelming that it became repetitive. And it was very hard to make a game that was that long that didn't have so much repetitive gameplay. And also the pacing was so awesome. Uh, if you ever get a game, get access to GameCube, check out Resident Evil on it. Cubert, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like the games that I grew up with. I grew up with a Commodore 64, and that's how I started. I started programming games on a Commodore 64. Cubert was definitely one of those original type games. Maybe I'll like sort of like circle things. Like, yeah, maybe I'm gonna go. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, it's probably covered up my stupid face. Okay, what I've done a lot. In other artwork is I'll go in and, and I'll start circling oh, excuse me colors it just doesn't actually it looks better in real life yeah so the Resident Evil 2 remake I I haven't checked it out enough I'm really curious how it's going to be different. Obviously, they're going to res up the graphics a bit. I don't think they're able to. They're probably not going to change the geometry so much. It's probably still going to have a blocky feel to it because it's just too much work to to res up geometry. There are some tricks we could do, like add smoothing groups to like smooth it. And and but nah, I bet you. I bet you. I haven't seen it, but I would imagine they just resed up textures. Um. You can have farther draw distances and shit, but um, uh, maybe it's more, it's most about the gameplay, right? Wow, Resident Evil 2, I also love it, but only the classic. Yeah, Resident Evil 5 is, I think, the one on the GameCube. I can't remember. It's been years since I played it. I played lots of StarCraft, and I played lots of... Um, Counter-Strike first came out. I was definitely one of those early people. Um, I was running a startup downtown Toronto, and me and a couple other uh, techno geeks, we uh, basically started up a LAN and had a crew, and we built a, like a little table setup where we had about 10, 10 computers. And this is this is um, Counter-Strike, like one. And we were into hardcore, man. Like we would leave. We would just go there and like, you know, everyone would like be finished work at five and then head over to this this office space. It was it was so freaking cool. It was actually my brother-in-law was part of it. 
and he was another uh yeah so we were like real early adopters of that but i was i mean that's because of video game stuff i suppose They use motion capture and the game is very detailed. All right, I'll have to take a look. It's the kind of remake that gave justice to its original. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm always open to check things out. I don't remember RE2 very well. I can't remember story or gameplay. Which one was the one with the, you're in Africa. The zombies were like African. I can't remember which one that one was. Congo or something. I just remember. I can remember. I can remember still the layout of some of the levels. Okay, so something is still missing from this. Oh, it is. How do you hang out? Shut up. Okay. All right. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe it is. Yeah, Resident Evil Five. It must be. Yeah, I still remember this open space. It's almost like a shanty town, and there's like large pieces of wood, almost like a construction site. It's funny. When you used to play games a lot, I don't know if you guys had experience, but I used to play, and also when you're making the game, when you're developing a certain game, you look at it so much, you start dreaming in that space. That happened to me lots of times. I'd like have dreams literally about the, the, the environment, the game environment. I loved Battlefield, some of the original Battlefields. Battlefield 2. That was a very fun multiplayer. Dun 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 dun. I know the guy who started the whole music, um, what's it called? Uh, Video Games Live, Tommy Tellerino, Tommy Tellerino. It's kind of neat. He started the, um, I don't know if you guys are into that stuff, but you can, it's, it's basically like a real orchestra playing video game music. It started by Tommy, who's friends with a, a friend of mine who, who runs Electric Playground. His name is Victor Lucas. He has this TV show called Electric Playground, which is all about video games. Anyhow, they sort of like, uh, Tommy was essentially the guy who started it, but people don't know that um, his uncle is... Uh, the lead singer of Aerosmith. <laughs> so that's sort of how he got that whole thing kicked off. It's kind of cool. I remember when when it first came out, I was like, man, I can't believe it took this long before video game music to get its props. Because there's some amazing music in video games. And I know, actually, one of my best friends became, uh, <laughs> he totally hit it by doing games for music. He made music for about four or five of my games, and then he started doing like he, he was like a kind of a big a music producer. He was like producing for like Lincoln Park and what's what's her name Janet Jackson, like just I mean I'm those are kind of like lame now, but back then they were big, and uh, yeah he 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 got uh, he's basically retired now. Did the soundtrack for some pretty funny funny fucked up games. Oh, sorry. People are talking here. I like my coffee, lots of milk, no sugar. Thanks. That's exactly what I do. You remind me of an uncle. He plays Ari in PlayStation Two and plays Counter Strike on the computer cafes. <laughs> yeah, right on. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, let's see what this color is. Pale peach. I'm not sure if I'm going to like this, but I might have to just mix it with other colors.
All right. Well, I got to say that right now my um, ringing my ears getting kind of loud. And this happens to me kind of frequently where I have to like, unfortunately, fucking just curl up in a ball and just wait, wait it out because it gets so loud. It's it gets disturbing. And uh, I, I, I feel it coming on. So I'm just giving you a heads up. I might have to stop and come back later. But uh, this also starts making me, I'm, I don't want to complain. Uh, yeah, just, it's not fun. And I think it's starting. Like the sound has been with me the whole time, but it sort of, it like starts getting more and more intense. Okay, okay, okay. Well, I feel like, uh, what is wrong with this thing? It's too orange, it's too red. It needs something else. It needs, hmm. Maybe this orange might be nice. What I like to do is I like to have subtle color variations. Like, I don't know if you can, can you even see that? If you can see the color variations here it's pretty close to hue. what i mean by like subtle color variations what i mean is like the hues the colors themselves are very similar and when you put them next to each other and layer them up it it just makes it looks more there's something nice about it there's something pretty about it so over here I don't know if you can even see that, but I added, there's this lemony yellow next next to this kind of peach that I'm just putting some dots in. And I'll try to like add different shapes and... And down here, I remember I said I'm gonna make these bigger Maybe I'll make them not paintbrush strokes. What I'll do is maybe I'll make them like unusual shapes. That's probably a better idea. So I'll just sort of like squish them on. So here's, this is neat, eh? The wash I did at the very beginning, do you remember, I don't know if you could hear at the beginning, I was sort of randomly putting red, but it's now created almost like a, a shadow almost. So what I, might, what I like to do is, I like to go with stuff that just happens by fluke. So I might actually go and, and maybe add purples in here. That actually might kind of look kind of nice. Is I'll add purples and, and the darker colors to accentuate this darker area. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's really goddamn noisy. Hello, Maggie Lee Arts. How's it going? Yours is frozen? Let me just check my... Uh... Oh, maybe I'm getting dropped frames. Let me just check my uh, connection. I see a red, big red square. So I'm going to. I have. I'm using OBS. Let me take a look at the stats. Yeah, it's dropping some frames. I'm getting about 3.4 percent drop frames. So it's possible because my up is only. I think I only have like yeah, 3.5 percent drop frames. That's not terrible. It's not great. So hey, myself 69. Let me know if um. If you become unfrozen or you're still frozen, because maybe what I'll have to do is I'll kill the stream and then restart it again. Because it, it could just simply be an easy refreshment. Yeah, 
Yeah, okay. It looks like I'm definitely getting drop frames. I've been looking at my stream. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stop. Peace out. I'm, and I'm gonna come back in a little bit. All right. So thanks for. It's not frozen, but there is la lag. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna stop the stream and I'm gonna restart my computer because I am seeing some drop frames and I just just might need that. So. Just give me like five minutes. I'll, I'll see you guys in a minute, okay? And by the way, I don't even know how the hell to stop. How, how are you supposed to stop the stream? Like there's no stop button. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to close the browser and I'll see you guys in a bit. Stop recording.